You got to think, you score, kick the extra point. You're a touchdown and extra point away from being ahead. And here's the eye. It looks like it's going to be Carson Austin in fullback. Nothing wrong with that. Hands off to Woodworth, bounces out to the right, shutting a tackler, spins wow, out. Wow, that's great and effort. That is unbelievable effort. He carried probably three would-be tacklers, a couple yards on his back. Man, that's the kind of stuff you got to have. You got somebody running like that. You got to. You got to jump on that. Put a saddle on him and ride him, huh? Mm -hmm. Second and goal here for the Tigers. Staying in the eye. Mahaney's going to keep it this time. Fall short of the goal line. Good job that time by the burial lineman just submarining our offensive lineman. Just getting as low as you can get. Digging in and getting penetration. We're worth coming out of the game, Rudd. Keeping it a breather. Mills and Brown, the two receivers for the Tigers. Carson Loud on the left side. Ball on the ground. Mahaney picks it up. Throws it up. And they come down with it. It's six. And the freshman making something out of nothing. The ball on the ground picks it up, gets away from the tackler, and he throws it in for six. And the Tigers making this a game. That's a break the Tigers needed. How about the awareness, not just to just scramble, not just to throw it out, but to find the open receiver in the back of the end zone. Trying to set up the swing gate. So the Tigers right back in this thing. I think, man, that had to be close. Seven to 13. And there's new life here at Leo Donahue. That's right. That's right. And there's a penalty marker. Oh boy. Oh That's boy. been the story of it. How many is that? That's what, 15 penalties? It's got to be. And I don't even combine, who knows, because Barry Hill's been pretty solid beside that one drive where they had several that killed them on that third and like 30 and forever, you know? Yeah. They had several on that drive. Besides that, they've been pretty good. Yeah. Nonetheless. Oh, I say that they had two this drive. Yeah. Barry Hill did, so never mind. Tigers right back in this one. Got the rowdy crowd re-engaged. The rowdy crowd bring up pretty good numbers. <laughs> they, really, they really have. It's going to be an all. <laughs> it's just going to be good field position for the Chieftains. That's just all you can say. You just want to keep them on their side of the field. Don't know exactly what we're going to see for a kick. Could be a long squib. That last touchdown is brought to you by Info Media, the Tigers Den, the East Island Mexican restaurant, Scott Abbott with Muscogee County Farm Brew, and Green Country Lanes and Muscogee Skate Center. So 3A Stigler not being very nice to Salisaw, 27-6. Uh, yeah, my Hobart Riders on off to a great start tonight. Playing a really good Okima team. It, the left yeah. is all over the field. Here's one of interest. Uh, Shakota up on Hilldale right now, 22 zip. Still not sure what uh, Zan's going to do with this kick. But I don't think it's going to be in the air deep. That shows you what I know. 
because <laughs> he kicked it Jones down pretty deep. At the 20. There's a oh, hole in the middle. He hits it. And he's taken down. Looks like Tavian Woodworth in on the tackle. Yeah, that's just, ju I was just hoping we could keep him on their side of the field. Didn't happen. Along with Tim Murphy. And it's been a while since we've seen Barry Hill and Jake Miller out with the ball in their possession. Yes, it has. Which is what we want. As long as they're on the sideline, we're okay with that. Miller drops back to pass, looking over to the left. That's pick. Receiver never saw him. Miscommunication yes. as Hendricks and Miller were hot in the first quarter, and so far been nothing in the second. That is picked off, and it's Tiger ball. 6-11, plenty of time. Plenty of time for the Tigers to put together some offense and maybe go in at halftime up a, up a point. Could happen. A little scary here, Poto over McAllister, 5A, big 5A McAllister, Poto 14, McAllister 3. McAllister is not the same powerhouse they were three years ago. No, they're not. Little jet. There's run. he's got room, he's at the 40, he's at the 50. At the 40, he's taken down to the 35-yard line. The Tigers have new life here. Uh, you like to the see momentum people. is rolling. That's right finish off that run like that man he put he laid the wood to the tackler is there a flag why is everybody gathering down no, here I, hope not. I don't see one yep there is just picked it up wow it looks like this is coming back wow <laughs> that's gonna be a holding so momentum not what it was no it's not as it was going to be on, that's going to be a 31 yard line. Well, I mean, you know, first and seven is better than first and ten, but first and ten inside the, the 30 would have been really nice. Mahaney hands it off. This time it's Codell Ford. Didn't get much on the play. Yeah, I'd like to see Codell uh, be able to, to get out and show some of his speed. Uh, I know he's uh, he's looking at trying to go to college on a track scholarship, but he can he can really he's got motor. serious speed. He can really motor. We're just going to take it. It's not Spins cut. inside. It's Second, third, cut. fourth effort. He's still on his feet. Tell you, that guy, he's, his shoulder pads are always going in the right direction. Always. That's another first down for the Tigers. He's about as tough as they come. I see Tigers just kind of burn the rest of the time mm -hmm. in this uh, first half. And I mean, you know, if they could go up a point at halftime, Barry Hill's got to be wondering. Or it bounces out to the right side. He hits a, another first down. About an 11-yard run. Feed the beast. Either beast, Woodworth or Rudd, they're both having That's a really true. good quarter here. That's true. Rudd. Just had well, the Carl Lawson effect. Remember that one when Carl Lawson? I feel like every time he had a big play, senior yeah. year, oh. he'd come back from penalties. Oh, this I is know. what happened to Jesse Grove tonight. I, I know. I, <laughs> he had yeah. two kickoff returns for touchdowns called call yes. back that year. Yes. I'll tell you what, Carl Lawson, speaking of tough, was a pretty tough football player. Oh, boy. That Barry was Hill pulls in the backfield. Boomer stays on his feet, showing off his balance. He's still on it. He's at the 40, the 35, the 30. He's got three tackles on him, and he's at the 20 inside the red zone in the 15-yard wow. line. Wow. Making something out of nothing. That's David Woolworth, ladies and gentlemen. There were three linemen 
hanging around his neck in the backfield. That play was dead from the start. Put that one on the highlight reel. Yeah, how he did that, I, I don't even know. I mean, his chest was at his knees going <laughs> down. Yes. A guy had a handful of them. That was about as impressive as anything you'll see. Spoiled we are here tonight. Spoiled. Oh, and it Boy, what? talk about a break. I don't even know what happened. I don't think I don't think the quarterback ever had the ball. I don't think Mahaney ever had the ball in his hands. I think it almost bounced off his hands or maybe his chest. I don't even know. I think it had to bounce off his chest the Austin. way it Yeah. It almost looks like it was like a toss up in the air, which wouldn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. It had to hit his chest. Yeah, just I mean just kind of fell into to Austin's hands. Look what I found. And you look wow. at Warwick there on the sideline just trying to catch his breath. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that last play was enough to take the air out of most people. And, he'd already and he, he didn't just sprint from, you know, however far back, the 50-yard oh, line yeah. to the 15-yard line. He was doing it as he's running around <laughs> being dragged down, trying to keep right. his balance. That's right. I mean, for most people, a 40-yard sprint's enough to take a minute break. Yeah. Forget having 11 guys chasing you. Talk about balance. Uh, he's got it. I mean, we've been oohing and on over Chase Burke all night for Berry Hill, and rightfully so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but good man, player. that run by that Woodworth just had, that's going to be one that we'll be looking back after the season's over with yeah, saying, dude. what a run. That is a highlight. That is a highlight play. Coach Whiteley rallying the troops right here, telling guys, hey, Let's stick this thing in the end zone. And there you see our keys to the game. Red zone defense spreading the field and defensive turnovers. Have got a turnover. We have spread the field a little bit, and we actually did get a big stop down there. Yeah, we did. We did, yeah. So, yeah, right now we got those covered. Just eliminate mistakes. I think you can put that one up there every week. Eliminate mistakes. Yeah. Mahoney under center. This time it's Rudd. Takes the hand off. Met a swarm of Chieftain defenders. Looks like it's an injured player down. Maybe yeah, it's a cramp. I think it's a cramp. Yeah. Looks like it. Early season, boy, you see that. You know, I mean, it's it's not hot tonight, but it, it's, it's warm. It's a little muggy. This big, this huge down right here, third and ten. After that big run by Woodworth, you got to capitalize. There, got it sealed. It's Woodworth again. He's inside the ten at the five yard line, still on his feet. He rolls out of bounds. Let's see where they mark it. Looks like the three yard line. I am not sure who had the block on that corner. I think. I think it might have been Ladd, but he got that defensive end sealed, and buddy, after that, it was uh, Carson Ladd, just a recent commit to UCO. Yeah, it was sprint to the corner, and that's a race that uh, Woodworth's going to win 99% of the time. So, nice that view. Handoff. And nice. they're in the backfield early. Woodworth thought he was going to get a break. Mm -hmm. Rudd waves him back in. Nope. No rest for you, my friend. Austin comes out. Second down. And last time I remember that we scored off a broken play. Yeah. Yes, we did. Barry Hill showing the blitz. Ooh, that was scary. Left side. It'll be short again. Nice shot. September moon. Boy, this year is just, man, it's already flying by. Yeah. Halfway through September almost. Yeah. What's the ball? On the one yard line? Maybe? Maybe the about one and a half. Yeah. I'm at a weird angle. 
A little confusion here. We're going to have a timeout. Definitely don't want to waste this opportunity. Yeah, they're going to take a timeout. We'll take them with them. We'll be back with more. You've been watching Fort Houston Tigers TV. If you're looking for some local entertainment, look no further than Green Country Lanes, located on South York Street in Muskogee. A This broadcast is brought to you by Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory, Keith's Hardware and Supply, Renfro. Hello and welcome back to Fort Gibson Tigers TV. And if you turned in for the first quarter and the second quarter, you have missed a great offensive drive here for the Tigers. Taking off, right. what, six minutes almost off the clock yes. here on this drive? Yes, working on it. Working on six. And in the beginning of the second quarter, um, you know, several opportunities where we shot ourselves in the foot. However, we still came away with six and put seven on the board. And we've got a great game here. Yes, we do. If uh, the Tigers can go ahead and stick this thing in, uh, who knows what can happen. The Tigers are hurrying to the ball, trying to catch Barry Hill off guard. Got to get set. And they were. And that's that and Haney, like a touchdown. Got to keep it. Got to push up front. Waiting for the signal. Touchdown. And it's six. And how about that? It's all tied up. The fans here are at the feet and the fort. And the Tigers are going to have a chance to take the lead here. Zan right Hazen. now, right now, that that missed extra point is looming, looming large. And we'll see if they send this weekend gate. They have a matchup right over here wide open. They throw it up. And there's a penalty marker on the field. Against the Tigers. So now Zion Hazen comes out on the field for the point after. Good snap and hold. And, and it's blocked. Too much. Right up the middle that time. Right up the middle. So a tie ball game here. 13-13. With a minute and one left. And that does not mean this half is over. As we've seen Jake Miller and that Barry Hill offense can oh, move the ball there's fast. A, there's no question. No question. This last drive was brought to you by Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory, Keith's Hardware Supply, Renfro Electric, Fort Gibson Education Foundation, Info Media, Tiger's Den, La Isla Mex Mexican Restaurant, and Green Country Lanes and Muskogee Skate Center. And you know, I haven't really ever noticed if they do a different cheerleader for the push-ups, <laughs> but I was watching the Clemson game the week zero and I think I think it was Clemson and their mascot did you know the, the push-ups for every touchdown mm -hmm. and he had to do over 60 push-ups that night and I think <laughs> is it six every time or seven every time or is it the score every time oh I hope it's I mean I don't know because if it's that means you're going 13 put 14 push-ups yeah. one push -ups, no. 28 push-ups yeah. that's got to be horrible yeah if I could do one for every score I'd be happy yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Just one. If I could just sit up here and not do any, I'd be yeah. pleased. Let me, yeah, let me let me do the extra points. I'll do the extra points. <laughs> Tell you, this is something Fort Gibbs is going to have to shore up, is, is our kick coverage. Uh, we are going to have to shore this up. That's a pretty good kick. Hayes is showing off his leg. Fields at the inside the 10-yard line. Again, hits a hole. And he's... Thrown down. It's not terrible. Team. It's not terrible. You'd like to hold him inside the 30, but man, that's not bad. That's not bad. 
Here comes Jake Miller, seeing what he can do just before this half is over. Better be awake. I'd watch a screen. Receiver in motion for the Chiefs. Burke out to the left side. Cuts back oh, inside nice instead of getting out of bounds. Time. That was Ladd on that tackle. Also, I believe that Zane Potter getting up. So good job that time by the Tigers chasing the ball, flying yeah. to the football. Clock continues to run 30 seconds. Looks like they might be Yeah, I think they're just running gonna be, here. Yeah, going to be content. Uh, he's going to screen, screen pass out to the left side. Oh, nice tackle. And wow. wow, he's really responding here in the second quarter. He's He had the pick earlier, correct? Yeah, yeah, he did. Tavian, that was a, boy, that was a pretty vicious tackle, I'll tell you. And he's not that big a kid. So, I think they're going to let this run yeah, off and take it in the it. half. And the Tigers are going in the locker room momentum on their yes, side. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. This is a completely different quarter here. Barry Hill had the first, and Tigers had the second. We're going to the halftime right. with a great game on our hands. We'll be back with more. I'm Hayden Hatworth, Bruce French. You've been watching Fort Gibson Tigers TV. This broadcast is brought to you by Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory, Keith's Hardware and Supply, Renfro Electric, Fort Gibson Education Foundation, Info Media, The Tigers Den, La Isla Mexican Restaurant, Scott Abbott with Muskogee County Farm Bureau and Green Country Lanes and Muskogee Skate Center. Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory wish to personally invite you and your family to come tour the newest funeral home and the only crematory in Muskogee. Cornerstone welcomes the opportunity to answer any questions regarding planning and pre-arrangements for you and your loved ones. At Cornerstone, you'll find a helpful professional staff and beautiful surroundings. Come experience the difference at Cornerstone Funeral Home, 1830 North York, Muskogee, where you will find faces you know and reputations you trust. Keith Hardware and Supply has been located in Fort Gibson, Oklahoma since 1957. We strive to find solutions to your fix and offer a multitude of quality products and services such as stilt chainsaws, Yeti coolers, Cub Cadet mowers, case knives, and big green egg grills. In early 2015, Keith Hardware remodeled and added hundreds of new items to better serve their customers. At Keith's Hardware, we're proud supporters of all Fort Gibson school events. Go Tigers! Fort Gibson Education Foundation's desire is to help our students receive the best possible education our community can provide. We make every effort to be the highest quality educational system in the state. Donations equal opportunities, opportunities for students and teachers to be their best. An opportunity to build, design, and compete. An opportunity to create, design, and share. An opportunity to encourage, develop, and provide. An opportunity to travel, process, and gain real-world knowledge. An opportunity to honor, celebrate, and inspire. When you donate to our Fort Gibson Education Foundation, 100% of what you donate goes back into our classrooms for students and teachers so we can give them as many opportunities as possible. We are your Fort Gibson Education Foundation. You may take the field for halftime entertainment.
Keith Hardware and Supply has been located in Fort Gibson, Oklahoma since 1957. We strive to find solutions to your fix and offer a multitude of quality products and services such as stilt chainsaws, Yeti coolers, Cub Cadet mowers, case knives, and big green egg grills. In early 2015, Keith Hardware remodeled and added hundreds of new items to better serve their customers. At Keith's Hardware, we're proud supporters of all Fort Gibson School events. Go Tigers! Renfro Electric is Keith Hardware and Supply has been located in Fort Gibson, Oklahoma since 1957. Renfro Electric has been in business for over 35 years and is a full service electrical contractor for all of Oklahoma. We are able to serve our customers with superior craftsmanship and top notch service. With over 40 employees and a bonding capacity in excess of $6 million, we can handle those larger jobs but are still small enough to provide the personal service our customers have come to expect. For any electrical needs, give us a call at 918-687-7535. Thank <laughs> you. 
senior captain is This broadcast is brought to you by Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory, Keith's Hardware and Supply, Renfro Electric, Ford Gibson Education Foundation, Info Media, The Tiger's Den, La Isla Mexican Restaurant, Scott Abbott with Muskogee County Farm Bureau, and Green Country Lanes and Muskogee Skate Center. Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory wish to personally invite you and your family to come tour the newest funeral home at the only crematory in Muskogee. Cornerstone welcomes the opportunity to answer any questions regarding planning and pre-arrangements for you and your loved ones. At Cornerstone, you'll find a helpful professional staff and beautiful surroundings. Come experience the difference at Cornerstone Funeral Home, 1830 North York, Muskogee, where you will find faces you know and reputations you trust. Keith Hardware and Supply has been located in Fort Gibson, Oklahoma since 1957. We strive to find solutions to your fix and offer a multitude of quality products and services such as stilt chainsaws, Yeti coolers, Cub Cadet mowers, case knives, and big green egg grills. In early 2015, Keith Hardware remodeled and added hundreds of new items to better serve their customers. At Keith's Hardware, we're proud supporters of all Fort Gibson School events. Go Tigers! Fort Gibson Education Foundation's desire is to help our students receive the best possible education our community can provide. We make every effort to be the highest quality educational system in the state. Donations equal opportunities, opportunities for students and teachers to be their best. An opportunity to build, design, and compete. An opportunity to create, design, and share. An opportunity to encourage, develop, and provide. An opportunity to travel, process, and gain real-world knowledge. An opportunity to honor, celebrate, and inspire. When you donate to our Fort Gibson Education Foundation, 100% of what you donate goes back into our classrooms for students and teachers so we can give them as many opportunities as possible. We are your Fort Gibson Education Foundation. Go see Scott Abbott, your local Farm Bureau agent. Proudly supporting and serving Green Country for 27 years. Call Scott Abbott at 918-682-2091 in Muskogee for your annual insurance review. Scott Abbott, your agent for life. Renfro Electric has been in business for over 35 years and is a full-service electrical contractor for all of Oklahoma. We are able to serve our customers with superior craftsmanship and top-notch service. With over 40 employees and a bonding capacity in excess of $6 million, we can handle those larger jobs but are still small enough to provide the personal service our customers have come to expect. For any electrical needs, give us a call at 918-687-7535. If you're looking for some local entertainment, look no further than Green Country Lanes located on South York Street in Muskogee, a prime place for open bowling, birthday parties, and glow bowling. Come on out to Green Country Lanes where bowling is a sport for those who have talent to spare. is brought to you by Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory, Keith's Hardware and Supply, Renfro Electric, Fort Gibson Education Foundation, Info Media, The Tiger's Den, La Isla Mexican Restaurant, Scott Abbott with Muskogee County Farm Bureau, 
and Green Country Lanes and Muskogee Skate Center. Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory wish to personally invite you and your family to come tour the newest funeral home at the only crematory in Muskogee. Cornerstone welcomes the opportunity to answer any questions regarding planning and pre-arrangements for you and your loved ones. At Cornerstone, you'll find a helpful professional staff and beautiful surroundings. Come experience the difference at Cornerstone Funeral Home, 1830 North York, Muskogee, where you will find faces you know and reputations you trust. Heath Hardware and Supply has been located in Fort Gibson, Oklahoma since 1957. We strive to find solutions to your fix and offer a multitude of quality products and services such as still chainsaws, Yeti coolers, Cub Cadet mowers, case knives, and big green egg grills. In early 2015, Keith Hardware remodeled and added hundreds of new items to better serve their customers. At Keith's Hardware, we're proud supporters of all Fort Gibson School events. Go Tigers! Fort Gibson Education Foundation's desire is to help our students receive the best possible education our community can provide. We make every effort to be the highest quality educational system in the state. Donations equal opportunities, opportunities for students and teachers to be their best. An opportunity to build, design, and compete. An opportunity to create, design, and share. An opportunity to encourage, develop, and provide. An opportunity to travel, process, and gain real-world knowledge. An opportunity to honor, celebrate, and inspire. When you donate to our Fort Gibson Education Foundation, 100% of what you donate goes back into our classrooms for students and teachers so we can give them as many opportunities as possible. We are your Fort Gibson Education Foundation. Go see Scott Abbott, your local Farm Bureau agent. Proudly supporting and serving Green Country for 27 years. Call Scott Abbott at 918-682-2091 in Muskogee for your annual insurance review. Scott Abbott, your agent for life. Renfro Electric has been in business for over 35 years and is a full-service electrical contractor for all of Oklahoma. We are able to serve our customers with superior craftsmanship and top-notch service. With over 40 employees and a bonding capacity in excess of $6 million, we can handle those larger jobs but are still small enough to provide the personal service our customers have come to expect. For any electrical needs, give us a call at 918-687-7535. If you're looking for some local entertainment, look no further than Green Country Lanes located on South York Street in Muskogee, a prime place for open bowling, birthday parties, and glow bowling. Come on out to Green Country Lanes where bowling is a sport for those who have talent to spare. is brought to you by Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory, Keith's Hardware and Supply, Renfro Electric, Fort Gibson Education Foundation, Info Media, The Tiger's Den, La Isla Mexican Restaurant, Scott Abbott with Muskogee County Farm Bureau, and Green Country Lanes and Muskogee Skate Center. I'm Hayden Hackworth alongside me, Bruce French. And if you're just now tuning in, a great first half you missed. The first quarter starting out, it looks like we were going to have a blowout game here. It looks like we were going to have a game that might be, you know, 35, 42, maybe 14. 
And that is not the case at all. Second quarter, the Tigers came back, punched Barry Hill right in the mouth, really held the ball for, I think, Barry Hill had it, a two-play drive when we had that interception. Then they had a three-play drive with a, a minute left, just ran, ran the clock out, and the Tigers had the ball for the rest of the quarter. Uh, and pretty much, regardless of penalties, did all, pretty much what they wanted to with the yeah. ball. Yeah, they did. It was kind of the, the Tavian Woodworth show. Of course, Rudd, again, you know, had, had some big runs in there. And, and I think more than that, uh, we forget those guys up front. There was some, uh, on those counter plays, there was some really good blocking going on. Uh, we're keeping that backside trash from getting penetration and, and getting those, those guys turned up. You know, we talked, I talked about how Carson Ladd sealed that, that defensive end down there, allowing Woodworth to get down to the one, one and a half. So you're right, it, it was two quarters. It was two completely different mm -hmm. quarters. There you see some of the keys to the game, tie in management, and like we said, the entire second quarter, Tigers held the ball. And you, as long as you keep Jake Miller on that sideline, you are doing a great job. That's right. And this this defense has stepped up. You know, in the first quarter, they had their way with them. Barry Hill did, but there you, you get the big interception. Uh, Devin Woodworth came up with huge stops there late in the second quarter. And the effort, like we, we saw from Tavian Woodworth, fourth and fifth efforts on every carry. That is what separates you and your opponent. Oh. And oh, Rudd filled it. Just tackled by the turf. Boy, that's, man, you hate to see that, Dad gum. But hey, you got to go score. I think this is where the team, you know, they got an opportunity here to do some growing up quick. You know, again, freshman quarterback. Uh, two, but he knows he's got two good running backs behind him. He's got a veteran offensive line up there. So uh, this is where you learn to finish. You know, you got to. It, it's four quarters. It's a four-quarter game. So it's the freshman under center. A touchdown pass here tonight for him. Rolling out to his oh, left. He's wide open. He finds a tight end, but he can't bring it in. Yeah, Connor Brown actually was behind the cornerback here. Uh, and, and, again, I mean, this kid, you know, he's, what, 14, 15 years old? Mm -hmm. He's got a lot to learn, and he's going to learn it. Yeah, you got to make, got to have that catch right there. That's that's big first down on first, first down on first down. A great way to start the half, too. Yes, it would. Yes, it would. But I think, you, you know, you got to come right back to him. Give him a chance to redeem himself. Yeah, he's a sure-handed guy. Oh, yeah, he will. He will. Lone back set. Toss play out to Woodworth. Getting shit. He's still on his feet. Wow. Takes a hit. Wow. Trying to wow. shoot him. Woodworth, wow. low on his wow. shoulder. Getting extra yards. I'm telling you, man, that's just – that's – Nearly superhuman effort. <laughs> well, I, I didn't get a number on who it was, but I think it was number 23, Cody Thomas, just tried to strip the ball from instead of tackling. Yeah. Big mistake. It gave Woodworth more balance because he went high on him and just drove him and several others for about five or six yards after. Yeah, I'm telling you, man, the kid, he's special. He's a special player. Toss out again. It's the right side. It's Woodworth. Stays on his feet. He's got a hole and a first down. The ball is up. The ball's loose on the ground. They're saying it's Barry Hill ball. I don't think so. I don't. I think I heard some boos. And it's going to be Tigers. Don't see the coaches uh, raising much cane. That's usually the first indicator. And there's a flag, so it's going to be 15 more. Somebody said something. Don't know if it's a player or a coach. I don't think it was a coach. So it's a sideline warning against Barry Hill. Ah. The chains move once again here for the Tigers. Ball on the other side of the field. Misdirection playoff to run on the right side. And he gets about five yards on the carry. Man. Man. <laughs> he, he's not hurting his average tonight, huh? Not at all. B 
Bear Hill fans having a little angst over there, don't know what. Still after the officials, I guess. Berry Hill traveling well tonight. Yeah, Berry Hill, they're, they're going to travel well. They're used to winning. Tiger showing the eye. Ends off again. Showing off his vision. He's so patient. So, yeah, yeah, he picks up the first down. Yeah. I don't think we had a first down in the first quarter. No. And I now we're getting him at ease. <laughs> I don't think we did either. We had more negative yardage plays. You're than probably right, yeah. Anything. It was we like Tulsa that first week when they had like negative 70. I mean, obviously it wasn't that bad. Right. But the penalties right. were killing us. Right. So OSU Tulsa is going to be interesting. I yeah, think. it is. Yeah, I think OSU, I hate to say this, being a Sooner fan, I think they're going to be really solid offensively this year. Yeah, I think With the playmakers they have. Uh, yeah, they're just not, I don't think the real, oh, that ball's on that the is, ground. It is, and Barry Hill recovers. Barry Hill. So there's the fumble they're looking for. Yep. And that's, you know, that's that freshman uh, freshman quarterback. Hasn't they haven't he and the center haven't gotten that down yet. It takes time. It takes time. And really I get I think that's the second fumbled snap, actually. We're fortunate to get on the first one. So this is where the Tiger defense is gonna have to dig in. You know, I know football and basketball have are so polar opposites, but yeah. I, I like to compare, you know, the transition from, you know, the snap from the center of the quarterback to a ball screen. Oh, here's a, here's a, oh, there's a lot of, a lot of grass, a lot of grass out here. And Hendricks gonna work back to the left side. Your versus Phil, it's him and Mills, and Mills drags him on the sideline, out of bounds. There's a flag on the field. And it's got to be on the tackle. No one was near it. Yeah, it would have had to be an almost face mask. And, and another, another, flag. another. There's a flag way back here. Yeah, C Coach Johnson's saying bring it back. But what happens after that, I don't know. The play is coming back. It's a flag fest. But like I was saying, uh, I like to compare the, the transition from the center to the, to the quarterback and the snap. A lot like the pick and roll in basketball between the ball handler and the screener. The ball handler gets so excited about getting off that screen and getting penetration, they forget to let the screener set it. And a lot of times a moving right. screen, a turnover, just like it happens with that ball in the field. That's right. That's exactly right. But, man, this one coming back, that's huge for the Tigers. Oh, yes. And Hendricks, he is shown, he's shown in special teams, on a punt return, kick return. And he, they didn't miss. Miller and Hendricks didn't miss in the first quarter. That he can do it all. He can do it all. Good vision. I wouldn't say great speed, but outstanding vision, outstanding balance. We talked about Carter Lawson earlier, a, a lot like a Carter Lawson. That's true. That's true. Feels his way through traffic. So we still got whistles blowing. Not sure what is happening. And they both jumped. Yeah, that's – Barry Hill suffered a little, start. little self destruction. So what could have been Barry Hill pushing into the red zone, now they're backed up in the negatives. Yeah, we got nobody – yeah, okay. Burke takes the ball. And he slammed down to the ground. Excuse me, that was number 22, Jackson Knight. 24 on the tackle, Carson Ladd. I believe Cooper Austin in on that tackle as well. 
Shepard and Morrow checking in for Barry Hill on this right side. Wow, and big push. Back. That. Yeah, Dylan Morgan getting great pressure. Just took that defensive end and stuffed him into the quarterback's lap that time. That's the reason that ball was thrown the way it was. Really good effort by Morgan again. And there's the guy who looks pretty good in the uniform, mm -hmm. tell you. And you can tell he spent a lot of time in the weight room this summer. Yes. I'm going to draw his back, throw it over to that right side. Incomplete. Let him too much. Nice shot of the moon. So the Tigers are going to have some really good field position here. Should have some really good field position here. Dylan. Uh, Dylan Mills back mm -hmm. deep. And it's Hendricks to do it all. Yeah. Tooley player, punter. You know, honestly, the way this game is shaking out, uh, it could kind of be the team that just makes the least mistakes. Yeah, you're exactly right there. Because we've both made our share, both teams. I don't know what this whole yards and penalties is, but it's well over 100. Yeah, I don't know if you remember back in 2014, here against Metro Christian, both teams were combined 250 I yards. I do remember that game. That, that was the longest game I think I've ever watched it, in my life. It was a long game. Yes, it was. So let's see if it continues to be Tavius, Tavian Woodworth show. And, and he draws back to pass. Throws off the back foot. He's got a receiver. It's caught a Brown and it's caught. Uh, tell you what, that's a big time throw for a freshman and this quarterback. this freshman is filled now tonight. And an outstanding catch by Brown. Just kept running, kept running his route. So often you see a high school kid break off a route because they don't think the quarterback's going to get it there. That's a big time that's play. That's his third big time throw tonight. And again, offensive line, you can't say enough about those guys. Gave him plenty of time. And he under center again. Hands it off this time to the left side to Rudd. Rudd's cramping. A luxury of having multiple backs. You're is right. This. You're right. I mean, like you said, hopefully just a cramp, but still just having the fact that we can go to Rudd or Woodworth, either a premier back. Uh, either right. could be a three down type of back. That's that is a fact. I think a lot of high schools early um, love it when they can have that kind of change of pace back as they're running back. Oh my gosh. And <laughs> I mean, we're lucky to have two guys that could be that. There were a lot of years in high backs. school when we didn't have, you know, one, much less two, quality mm -hmm. running backs. And that happens at a lot of places. I mean, small school football, you just, you know, you take what you get. I mean, you can take Codell Ford, and you can put him on a lot of rosters, and he'd be a good running back. Yeah, he would. He would. Well, it was like uh, Carter Lawson you mentioned yeah. earlier. I mean, my goodness, how many teams would like to have a Carter Lawson? Speaking of Lawson, saw the Gup uh, with his picture in the yep. uh, NSU mm -hmm. media guide. Yeah, I was at, at the game last night as uh, Coach J.J. Eckerd taking over. Um, first time, the first home game last night didn't go well at all. I think it was 70 to 7 was the bad, final score. Bad. I left at the end of the third. Um, yeah, and you know, you got to give the guy, I mean, people say three years, I say four years, you know, you I mean, you just got to give that to him. Yeah. He hasn't recruited any of those kids. At all. And he came in um, pretty early in the spring, but still, that's after oh, mo yeah. all those kids had already made decisions. Yeah, they had. NSU. What I like about being at the game, what I, what I love, 
was, yeah, they're getting drilled, but the way they kept their heads up, um, it, you know, you always hear that. Yeah. But to really preach that, to really coach that, the way That's the right. coaches reacted, they know this this is not a one-year fix. They know it's not no. a two-year fix. No, it's not. It's not. Until, really, until you get your recruiting class as seniors. Wow, would you look at that. That guy. He's made so many people miss tonight. I, and his yards after just contact. just gone through people, too. I have no idea what his yards after contact are, but they're phenomenal, I can assure you. Last, last week he had 171 yards on 27 carries. And you, you think, how can he improve on that? Six yards per carry, how do you improve? <laughs> I think he can improve. I think he has. I think he has. And it's not against a lesser opponent either. This is no. a really good Berry Hill team. No, it's a really good Berry Hill team. Nice job for Gibson. Once again, offensive line getting a good seal, just kind of pushing that – that defensive line backwards and, and uh, giving Woodworth, he doesn't need a lot of room. I think he could run through a keyhole, I honestly do. Yes, run the clock. Start the clock. Woodworth alone back. It's Austin and Ladd out to the left. Reaching out for more yards. Looks like they're going to place him right at the five yard line. Looks like it's going to be a first down. Toss play out to the right. Wilbur shifts oh, back inside. Gotta, and yeah, going to be a hold. Penalty marker on the field. It's going to be a hold when it comes from that area. You know, we were talking earlier. I was telling you, you know, Jinx and Union, okay. Last week, Big Speed decimated, decimated Jinx. Mm -hmm. Like we've never seen. I think it was a, a history I think of Jinx right. getting blown out. I think you're right. And and right now, Union is up 21-20 in the third quarter. So how good is Big Speed? Yeah. yeah. How good is Big Speed? And what's cr there was a huge streak of, you know, Jinx Union for like 20 years. Yeah. Last year, Broken Arrow sets it. This year, maybe, or the year before, Owasso set it. That's right. Then Broken Arrow, now maybe Bixby. I, yeah, it's, I think it's changing. I think you're seeing a changing of the guard. I really do. Shots back, throws off his back foot again. And it's going to be intercepted. Yeah, got a little... Got to throw that thing to the corner of the end zone. I think it's probably going to be offensive pass interference. Man, that's a that's a mm -hmm. wasted opportunity right there. And he had lucky wall go when he hit Connor Brown deep over the middle. He threw it off his back foot. Yeah. The first time he did it again, didn't have the same outcome. Yeah. Yeah. He'll learn. He'll learn. It was one of those opportunities that, that slipped slipped out of our hands. Once again, a mistake. You get a penalty, and boy, it puts you in a puts you in a hole. That's where the defense has has to really step up that that sudden change of possession. Miller rolls out to his right. Oh, that's a lot. Oh, Jackson for New oh, comes out there. I think. Man. Oh, no. Dylan Mills just missed it. That was so close. So close. Looks like Woodworth shaking up a little bit. Maybe, maybe. And Purdue took a shot. Yeah. I was just trying did. to field that ball. Nice job by Ladd that time. Using all that 6'3", six, 6'4", six, frame, whatever he is. Yeah, we jumped. Oh. The right, I think it was Braden Morgan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
To make the second and five. A little tight end over action here. You know, driving back, there's pressure. Those over the middle, just out of reach. And again, penalty marker on the field. And man. Intended receiver was a tight end. Josh Chambers, number 87. Rubbing the passer. It's one of those unearned breaks, but you know, Fort Gibson's had their share of those tonight. This drive is brought to you by Cornerstone, Funeral Home and Crematory, Keith Harwin Supply, Renfro Electric, Fort Gibson Education Foundation, and Info Media. A toss play to Hendricks. This goes as a pass. Oh, and that's. Ooh, looks like a horse collar. He's penalty mark on the field again. You know, every time I see this play right here, I have nightmares thinking about the 2012, I think it was, West Virginia OU game oh. where Tavon Austin just lit our defense. Somehow he won the game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hendricks out to that left side has plenty of room to operate on an island. Screen pass. Oh. This time tonight, Carson Austin blows it up. Defensive line not fooled this time, but another penalty marker on the turf. And I think they may be calling a late hit. It looked like it could have been. I don't know. This one may surpass the uh, Metro Christian game. No, yeah, you're right. So many mental. I thought this was going to slow down, but it's not. Because that night, that was a lot of chippiness, too. Yeah, yeah. And we've had our share of that yeah. in this game. Boy, those those things, they man, they come back to haunt you, I'm telling you. Hands off the middle again. You know, earlier they had a lot of success with Burke in between the tackles, but here ever since that first quarter ended, have not had that same success on the ground. No. The Tigers uh, made some adjustments at halftime. <laughs> And let's face it, I mean, both teams really playing their way into shape tonight. <laughs> Smith in motion. Their hands the ball off to Burke. And Burke making me eat my words. He gets a first down and more. Yeah, there was just a hole big enough to drive a truck through on the offensive line that time. Whole right side of the... the before Gibson, D-line just kind of disappeared. Barry Hill getting to the line in a hurry. Putting a lot of pressure on the Tiger defense. Burke bounces out to the left side, comes back in. Stretches out nearly. They're going to mark him just short, about a yard. A good yard for a first down. I don't think he's a Tavian Woodworth, but I don't think he's a long way behind. He should have been, he ran through a tackle in the backfield that time. And I think it was Austin typically a, a good tackle. You can see the Chieftains back to the line already. Dylan Morgan's down, or Braden Morgan, I'm sorry, is down. He'll afford to lose him. Already down Thornbrew. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
We'll take an injury timeout. We'll be back with more. We've been watching Ford Gifts and Tigers TV. Heath Hardware and Supply has been located in Fort Gibson, Oklahoma since 1957. We strive to find solutions to your fix and offer a multitude of quality products and services such as stilt chainsaws, Yeti coolers, Cub Cadet mowers, case knives, and big green egg grills. In early 2015, Keith Hardware remodeled and added hundreds of new items to better serve their customers. At Keith's Hardware, we're proud supporters of all Fort Gibson School events. Go Tigers! Keith Hardware and Supply has been... Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory wish to Cornerstone Funeral Home and Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory wish to personally invite you and your family to come tour the newest funeral home and the only crematory in Muskogee. Hello, and welcome back to Fort Gibson Tigers TV. And it's second down and one. Ball on the 19-yard line. Barry Hill rushes to the line. Miller hands it off to the fullback. The ball looks like the ball's free. I think Barry Hill might have recovered. Yeah. You're right. Showing the eye again for Barry Hill. And Austin was back there fast. Still pushing though. Boy, he's close. He's really close. <laughs> it looks like. Right on the one yard line. Good yard to go. Yeah, and you think back to the two opportunities Fort Gibson had early in this in this quarter. Put the ball in the end zone. Hands off the fullback again. And waiting for the signal. And it's six. The question is now. Can either team make the point after? <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot of success. For the point after first for Barry Hill was just a horrible snap. Then the kick, I mean, it just got completely under it and it barely got any here. Yeah. It's a good snap. And it splits it up right this time, making the seven point ball game. We're back with more. We've been watching Four Youth Tigers TV. This broadcast is brought to you by Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory, Keith's Hardware and Supply, Renfro Electric, Fort Gibson Education Foundation, Info Media, The Tiger's Den, La Isla Mexican Restaurant, Scott Abbott with Muskogee County Farm Bureau, and Green Country Lanes and Muskogee Skate Center. Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory wish to personally invite you and your family to come tour the newest funeral home and the only crematory in Muskogee. Cornerstone welcomes the opportunity to answer any questions regarding planning and pre-arrangements for you and your loved ones. At Cornerstone, you'll find a helpful professional staff and beautiful surroundings. Come experience the difference at Cornerstone Funeral Home, 1830 North York, Muskogee, where you will find faces you know and reputations you trust. Hello and welcome back to Fort Gibson Tigers TV. As Barry Hill just capped off a scoring drive. 2013, Codell Ford four picks the ball up. Runs back up the middle. Whoa, pretty good. 35-yard line. Yeah, pretty good field position. We'll take it. We will take it. And last time the Tigers had the ball, marched down in the red zone just to throw an interception. And had success up to that turnover. That's right. This third quarter rolling right on by. And 
And Haney rolling out to his left. Gets squ shoulder squared. And it's complete to Woodworth for a short gain. Yeah, he'll learn. I mean, you really, you want that ball up quick. You want that ball up really quick. Get into the hands of your receiver, especially if it's a Woodworth. And let him, let him use his skills. But he'll learn that stuff. Woodworth in motion. Haney draws back to pass, looking for Connor Brown. Screen play out to the left. He's past a 40. Fighting for extra yards. Hang on to that ball. Well, oh, the whistle's whistle. blown. Yeah, blow Took the a whistle. while. It's fine. Connor Brown's out of the pile. <laughs> the pile's still going on. <laughs> I didn't even see him get out. Yeah, Coach Wiley coming out and telling everybody, get out of there, get in the huddle. Last thing they need right now is a dumb penalty. And I don't know why I remember this, but I think that night, as you talked about earlier with the Metro Christian game from back 2014, I think it was 257 yards was the number. <laughs> that sounds why right. I remember that, I don't know. It sounds right. It was a marathon. I know that. And Woodworth over on the right side. He's brought back. Looks like a simple read option. I was fooled. However, Barry Hill wasn't. No, they were not. Good look at some of those offensive linemen. Rainbolt, Potter. The guys that make it all happen. Yeah, we ben, talk about Warworth ben and everyone Johnson. else a lot. That's right. Ben Johnson. Mahaney's going to keep it. She's back inside with a little juke move. Back to the original line of scrimmage, maybe a little more. Mahaney looks to be a gamer. He's not just going to give up on it. He's going to get every yard he can get. That's right. Jacob Hess out there as well. Those guys, man, they do the dirty work and hardly ever get recognized. But I'm telling you, Tavian Woodworth would have zero yards tonight mm -hmm. uh, without them. And Tavian would be the first one to tell you that. No one's covering that slot. Woodworth's in motion. Manny rolls out. Draws back to pass. Throws a oh, deep ball. It's short. Oh, goodness. It'll be fourth down. That was close. I mean, it was, it was pretty close. You know, he throws a nice ball. Catchable. Brings on Zan Hazen, the special teams unit. There is an injured player down on the field for Barry Hill. Looks like a cramp. This game is brought to you by Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory, Keith's Hardware and Supply, Renfro Electric, Fort Gibson Education Foundation, Info Media, Tiger's Den, La Isla, Mexican Restaurant, Scott Abbott with Muskogee County, Farm Brew, and Green Country Lanes and Muskogee Skate Center. As you look at how well Tigers really have uh, done a good job covering those keys of the game, however, we talk about the, the effort, uh, mental effort. We've got to cut down, like, like we've said time after time, on those mental mistakes. Yeah, with everything else being equal, you know, I think the two teams are pretty, pretty equal. Uh, we said, we said earlier tonight that it could be a matter of who makes the least mistakes. Yeah. And we said, you said, give yourself a credit for that. Yeah, well, I'm just saying it's, it's you know, they both made their share. They both yeah. made some really... Uh, irrational decisions out there. I mean, we start about our defense was solid that last drive, but we gave up 30 yards plus in penalties. That's right. That's a nice, another nice punt. Hendricks going to fill it. He runs backwards. We're going to try to run down. He gets rid of Woodworth. Doesn't get much further as he is brought down by. Oh, and another flag. 50. That is Braden Roberts. Unbelievable. 
I think the officials may need to ice arms after this game tonight. Yeah. They've definitely thrown as many, if not more, penalties and the ball has been in the air. Yeah, it's it's gonna be how many how many times tonight have we let the I can't even put a hole. number on it anymore. I, I mean, can't even put a guess. You kick the guys into a hole and you let them out with a mental error. And I don't know who it was, it doesn't matter. You just got to be in control out there. You have to be in control. So Berryhill setting up shop on the 37-yard line. Hands off to Burke on the left side. He's following his blockers. Yeah, he's, he does a good job of that. He does a really good job following the blocker. That's that, that patience, you know, you were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. just, just being patient. Let it set up. Woodwork does a good job of that. Look at uh, Anthony Maldonado there. It's Smith in motion. Hands off to Burke again, left side. Looks the corner. Boom, that was a pretty good, uh, pretty good stick right there. I cannot make it out. Looks like Austin. Be a good place to start. So it's going to be the end of the third quarter. We'll take it to the fourth. 20 to 13, Barry Hill up on top. We'll be back with more. I'm watching Fort Gibson Tigers TV. Heath Hardware and Supply has been located in Fort Gibson, Oklahoma since 1957. We strive to find solutions to your fix and offer a multitude of quality products and services such as stilt chainsaws, Yeti coolers, Cub Cadet mowers, case knives, and big green egg grills. In early 2015, Keith Hardware remodeled and added hundreds of new items to better serve their customers. At Keith's Hardware, we're proud supporters of all Fort Gibson School events. Go Tigers! If you're looking for some local entertainment, look no further than Green Country Lanes located on South York Street in Muskogee, a prime place for open bowling, birthday parties, and glow bowling. Come on out to Green Country Lanes where bowling is a sport for those who have talent to spare. Oh, really? That's right. That's right. Whip up on and they go Yeah. Hello and welcome back to PortGibsonTigers.tv. <laughs> you, you jinxed yourself. I did. <laughs> <laughs> big down, big down for the Tiger defense. Barry Hill trying to draw him off on a hard count, didn't work. And nice job. Don't think he got it. Don't, didn't get it. Going to be about a yard short. It's a dangerous spot on the field. I, you have to think that Barry Hill with a, with a touchdown lead is going to just kick this thing away, but you never know. Ron Davis is over there. And also, you never know, they can drop back to punt, but for, don't forget that number nine, Braden Hendricks, is yeah, the punter. that's right. And he has made, he's been their main playmaker. Yes, Jake Miller's been great uh, behind center as a quarterback, but uh, it has been Hendricks eating all those yards up. I think you could almost watch for another hard count here. Call timeout. So this Saturday, have like you said, OSU Tulsa, uh, and then we have OUCLA. You know, last year I thought, man, this may not be a great game this year, but give Chip Kelly a second year. But Chip Kelly's still not a whole lot to work with. It their no. their season, it's been off to a brutal start. Yes, yes, it has. And hopefully that new look defense of OU will continue to improve. Still, I think everyone's getting uh, very excited a little too early. Still, what we're right oh, number yeah. 92 right now. Yeah. Playing yeah, South Dakota. We're still not there. Yeah, and Houston. 
Right now, Houston has a lead 7 to 0 over Watt number 20. Mike Leach is Washington State. Derek King was talking about being a Heisman favorite. It's 8 for 12 with 57 yard, or 72 yards in the air. With a touchdown, has 50 yards on the ground, six carries. Here's a score for you that just seems weird. Vertigo 72, Victory Christian 7. Wow. Yeah, that doesn't, I don't know, that doesn't sound Victory right. Christian 7? Yeah. And that is not at all. I don't think I've ever seen a bad Victory Christian team in any sport. No. Here's another flag. I do not know what happened. I can say that it definitely was not roughing the punter. And I've never seen a Vergers football game, but I know their basketball program's always been top notch. Yeah, typically they're they're pretty good. They're pretty good. Hmm. Let's see. So the ball is going to be spot on the 24. It looks to still be some confusion on the field. So while he's having a conversation with the officials. It's run in motion. Mahaney hands it off to Woodward. There's a big hole. Big he hole. He hits the 40. He's, he's got one man to beat. He's, he's gone. Beats him. He's, he's at gone. the 30. And you call it six. And it's been like that all night. Tavian Woodward. I don't even know if he got touched on that play. No yellow on the field. Just checking. Just saying. Boy, that was a hole. Talk about, you know, I talked about. Uh, uh, the offensive line. Yeah, talking about Barry Hill's offensive line yeah. opening up a hole. That was a big hole. Maybe two trucks. So here we go. See if the Tigers can get this thing tied up. Dylan Mills, the holder. There's the snap. It's down, and it's good. 20 to 20. What a game. We'll be back with more. You're watching Four Years of Tigers TV. This broadcast is brought to you by Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory, Keith's Hardware and Supply, Renfro Electric, Fort Gibson Education Foundation, Info Media, The Tigers Den, La Isla Mexican Restaurant. Scott Abbott with Muskogee County Farm Bureau and Green Country Lanes and Muskogee Skate Center. Hello, welcome back to FortUpsTigers.tv. I'm Hayden Nack, alongside me is Bruce French. And first quarter we saw three and out, three and out, three and out. How about this? The Tigers come out, a one play drive. That's right. I think it was a 70-yard run. We were at the 30-yard line. Yeah, it was, uh, it was 70 plus. I think it was inside the 30. I think. Let's give him 71. Yeah. Unofficially. Yeah. Unofficially. We can do that. Uh, yes, we can. We can do whatever we want. Yes, yeah, that's true. Unofficially. <laughs> that's right. So what turned out, and I, you know, I'm just going to be honest with you, it has not been a pretty game. Not. No. Not yeah. Not from at all. The start. Now it's been a little exciting. But There's the been hype, flags. and hype's not always pretty. Yeah, I know, you're right. The flags have been ridiculous. Maybe the every last one of them has been earned. I don't know. I know a lot of them have. This is going to be another pooch kick. I'd like to see that thing get a little bit deeper. I hate to give him the ball in the 40-yard line. And it's going to go out of bounds. You know, like, I, I mean, 30 is not bad. 40, you don't want to do that. Yeah. We That was all what we always wanted. We just wanted to keep them inside the 30-yard line. 
Except for the years we had a guy named Joey Weedle. A, a flag. Another flag. Are Where's this one at? Kidding me. I think I guess it was offsides. I'm gonna have to kick it again. <laughs> I don't know if there's a mistake that can be made that has not been made tonight. If that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. You're, if I, you're if right. I said that right. We've had late hits. I don't know if we've had a roughing the passer yet. I think we have. Do you think we have? Yeah, we okay. had a roughing the passer. We did, okay. Yeah. We, did, we almost had a roughing the kicker, but then they call it off. Yeah. Because they just call it a flop. Yeah. Or whatever the flop term is <laughs> in football. <laughs> it's, it's a flop. Oh, boy. Just, oh, my goodness. I just... Oh, the mistakes. That's pretty good. going to fill this kid. inside the 10. Just got to get that closed up. And we do. Yes. Inside the 25. So Barry Hill pays it's for Woodworth that one. It's again. Yeah, they paid for that one. Woodworth Brothers having a great, great game. I'm assuming brothers. They are. Good. They are. That time it helped us out. So set up shop on the 23 yard line. Draws back to pass, finds a guy over the middle. Again, just led Hendricks too far. Good decision not to hit him because I thought, <laughs> I thought Devin was going to lay Rock the wood him, yeah. to him right there, and he decided not to, and that was a good decision. That's really the perfect last name for them, Woodworth. Yeah, yeah, that's for right. This drive is brought to you by Renfro Electric and Info Media. Two receivers out to the right for Barry Hill Miller. Oh, rolling out to his that. right. Nice job that time. Yeah, we're gonna get Coming a hold. Back. We're gonna get a holding call against Carson Ladd. They about ripped his jersey off, and he was doing a really good job keeping the quarterback contained. That was an obvious call. So both teams really just, I mean, it's like, I don't know. We can't stand success. We got we to yeah. do something. To, it's just like, I don't know, like a bad dream. It's one of those times when you, you just you want all the bad stuff to stop, and it just never does. Another hand, fakes the handoff. No, he does hand off to Burt. Burt keeping it. And tackled in there that time, I believe, by Zane Potter. Big Zane Potter getting out there on that perimeter, making a tackle. That's a good hustle. Zane, 6'2", 295. Pretty nimble. It's going to be third and 15. 9.44 on the clock. So I'm, I'm saying screen right here. Or perhaps. Swings out. Same difference. And I can't tell if Braden Morgan got his hand on it or not, but however, it's going to fall complete. Yeah, it was close. So four Gibson Tigers should have some good field position here. Should have some really good field position. Yeah. 
the special teams unit out on the field for the Tigers. It's Dylan Mills back deep to return this one. Not the best snap in the world, but he gets it off. Pretty good punt, too. Oh, mm. boy, what a bounce. It's a big bounce. What a bounce. Synthetic turf bounce. So we'll see how many plays it'll take this time. Hopefully they put it six in the end zone again here for yeah, the Tigers. Yeah, absolutely. And I guarantee you the offensive line blocks like it did that play. They will be an end zone. That's right. Got to feel pretty good. I mean, Tigers got to feel pretty good about themselves after all the mistakes we've made. Got a, got a chance right here. Man, he dropped back to pass. Went to Connor Brown. Incomplete. Well, he put it out there, like you said earlier, he put it out there where if anybody's going to catch that ball, it's going to be Connor Brown. Pretty good coverage. I like the confidence in the young quarterback from the coaches, putting the ball in his hands, put, putting it a big play for first down, yeah. trying to catch him off guard. That's right. I mean, I, I, I have not a problem with that call. I think you have you need to throw it down the field mm -hmm. on the first down every now and then. Just keep them honest. And you know that every person on that field right now is looking for 21. Yeah. Oh yeah, they are. <laughs> I would be. Your ears, it's irresponsible not to. Yeah. And off to Rudd, and he's met yeah. behind the line of scrimmage. Yes, he he's was bring met. Third down. He was met full force. Third and long. Once again, back to that. Position you just don't want to be in. You know, a lot of times on this third and long, they've stayed under center. They haven't gone with that empty set they've shown. And here they'll stay under center again. Going out. Going pressure. Uh, the receiver fell down. He just swallows and goes out of bounds. Yeah, I mean, I th that's pretty heads up. I mean, there's nobody open. Receiver, primary receiver fell down. Uh, there's just not much you can do with that. Then you love seeing uh, the sportsmanship on the sideline. Uh, I'm going to butcher his name, but Dimitri Apostol Apostol Apostolize. I'm assuming that's how you say it. I have no idea. Anyways. He gets dragged out of bounds. He takes three of the little ball boys out with him. <laughs> Helps them all up. Yeah. Sorry for uh, butchering your last name there, Dimitri. Hey. I'm sure it's been butchered before. That's a nice punt. I'll tell you what, Zan Hayes. He's had a night. He's done a good job. He's had a night. Oh, he's got to fill this Man. one. He, he tried to pick that one up and run it. Yeah, not a good decision, I don't think. And Murphy said not today. Yeah, Woodworth down there. So the defense did their job for Barry Hill, forcing the three and out. Now let's see if the offense can answer. Maybe a four and get another defensive stand here. They're going to drop him back, rolls out. It's going to be a short completion. Pretty good job. I mean, quarterback, pretty resourceful there. He was, he was being chased from all directions and was able to get that ball off. Like I say, short, short game, but could have been ugly. So second and seven here for Barry Hill. Well, there's the ball on the, the turf. Down. And he's wow. taken up in the backfield, the tackle for a loss. That was Jesse Rudd, was it? No, Carson Ladd. Carson Ladd's had a pretty good ball game tonight. Defensively, he's kind of owned that, that little spot over there. It's 
from Miller and Burke in the backfield. Miller looking to the side for the play call. It's going to be a uh, second time out of burial this half. Is that correct? Yes, I believe so. So we'll take a timeout with them. We'll be back with more. We've been watching Fortress the Tigers TV. This broadcast is brought to you by Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory, Keith's Hardware and Supply, Renfro Electric, Fort Gibson Education Foundation, Info Media, The Tiger's Den, La Isla Mexican Restaurant, Scott Abbott with Muskogee County Farm Bureau, and Green Country Lanes and Muskogee Skate Center. Hello, welcome back to Four Gifts and Tigers TV. Uh, it's Barry Hill's ball. The tie ball game here at the Leo Donahue Stadium. 2020. You know, I just realized I've been calling them the Chieftains. They're not the Chieftains. I, I started calling them the Chieftains. <laughs> that's, that's the pulpa. Uh, Barry Hill, just the Chiefs. Well, so pardon me, Barry Hill. I was Hill with you. So it's both of us. I, I apologize. We're throwing the long ball back shoulder. Couldn't get turned around enough. Yeah. Because that was Dawson James. Been a favorite target. James and Hendricks tonight for Miller. They'll bring up fourth down. And really, besides the one long run by Woodworth, neither offense having much success here no. in the fourth quarter. No, the fourth quarter's been pretty, pretty defensively controlled. Nice uh, lay by point. Woodworth that time. Not going to get that big bounce this time. Actually took a Tiger bounce. So this offense comes back out on the field. A little over six and a half minutes to go in this contest. And hopefully they can put together a drive like they did to close that second quarter out. Had about a five minute drive, a scoring drive. You know, I'm just sitting here thinking, I watch Morgan and all Maldonado, all those guys come off on defense. I know a lot of them have to hang out you know, and go play offense yeah. again. But since the first quarter, this Fort Gibson defense has played pretty stinking good, I'm telling you. You're right, they have really adjusted. All sports are game of adjustments. That's right. Because Barry Hill is, I just can't, I, I don't think I can overemphasize the fact they're a good 3A yeah. football team. Top five ranked team. Yes, and with a whole lot of uh, history in that program. And this, this Tiger team coming off of a pretty good lashing uh, Tahlequah, 5A Tahlequah last week has, uh, has actually, I think, responded pretty well. I think they were challenged this week by, by Coach Whiteley and the whole staff. And I think they've responded. Did that pitch play out to the left? Ooh, that's a good tackle. That's probably the best tackle I've seen on Woodworth maybe ever. Huge down right here. This is a it's a huge down. You look at it and go, ah, it's two yards. Two yards. <laughs> Especially when you have eight stack in the box. That's right. That's right. And you're, you're tired and getting down to the bottom of the tanks. Right now it's, it's their will against ours or ours against theirs. Uh -oh. yeah, he he's going to be sure, yeah. It's, uh, he didn't gain much, did he? No, and it's going to be, it's going to be a long, it's going to be a yard, but I think it's going to yeah. be more of a long yard to get it. Yeah. I think, yeah, it's going to be more than a yard. Yeah, it's a yard and a half, pretty close to a yard and a half, I think. Let's just say it's going to be tough sledding up in there. I can tell you. 
Yeah, I and think, it's him on the hard count. I think it's going to be first down for Gibson. Uh, we have a, no, not much of a discussion. Offside. Hey, 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 first down, Tiger Bowl. The chains will move. Perfect time to do the hard count. Good job by the little freshman. I shouldn't call him a little freshman. He's played big tonight. Yeah, he has played big. And Woodward took the handoff. Not much of a hole, but still made something about a three yard gain. Yeah, three yards, you know, we'll take it. We'll take it. We're eating clock and getting closer to that goal line. We're with the low back. We takes the toss out to the right side. They made the first tackler miss. Gets back to the 30, maybe 29 yard line. It's going to be third and third and a long six. Well, they're moving a little bit more, more like third and five. Four down to five. I don't know. <laughs> Trying to read the the box over there and it keeps moving, but it's yeah, third and four. Austin Ladd line up on the left side of the line. Yeah, kind of an unbalanced look for us. And, and they got a great push. The corner coming up that time. Yep. So fourth and what? Three? Maybe. He didn't get he much. He didn't get much at all. It's more like four, if the box is correct. Yeah, it's closer to four. You go another hard count here? Uh, I think you've at least got to try it. I think they will. Yeah, they try. tried. Yeah. They tried. Yeah. And, and like that, that. That's yeah. staying with the style, you know, Coach sure. Lott usually does. You at least try it. You can't hurt anything. No, no. Just update on some of the college games. Washington State now scored seven. Houston up 14 to seven. Minute 28 left in the half. Not really surprised. I think Houston's a lot better football team. Yeah. You know, all Me the too. hype about Oklahoma, the new defense and all that stuff. I think Houston kind of got lost in all that. They're not bad. They're not a bad football team. And Mac Brown got his first loss of the season, 18 to 24 to Wake Forest. And Les Miles looking to recover after last week's loss to Coastal Carolina, 41-24 up on Boston College. Well, the hat. And this game is brought to you by Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory, Keith's Hardware and Supply, Renfro Electric, Fort Gibson Education Foundation, Info Media, Tigers Den, and Lisa Mexican Restaurant. And the old and yeah, drops back to pass. He's looking for that. He has him. And it's incomplete. Going to be a turnover on downs. It was a jump ball. It's, you know. <laughs> 
Again, I think, you know, like you said earlier, I mean, uh, it's, it's Coach Wiley showing a lot of confidence mm -hmm. in that freshman quarterback, and it really was not a terrible ball. And I think they're, they're looking at that matchup. They think they have a high matchup there with Ladd. Yeah. And just trust him to come down with it. Yeah. And I think you know, the ball was there. Uh, you know, it's a bang, bang play. Sometimes you've got to make a play. Yeah. That's right. Go. Morgan on the tackle. No, there's another white hat down there. I think a lot of times in sports, sometimes coaches try to out coach too much, but what yeah. I like about what Coach Wrightley is, he pushes his pushes players in a position yeah. to go make a play and win you that's the right. game. That's right. That's I think it's the, that's a key to being a coach. Get your guys in the, in the right position, let them make plays. There is no perfect play call no. in any sport. No. It's about being your man in front of you. Yeah, that's motion. That's going to be a legal motion. I don't know what the end of the result of this play is going to be, but it's going to be minus five, I can tell you. So Shakota's still ahead of Hilldale, uh, showing it third quarter. You can't imagine it still being third quarter. It may, it may have been a 7.30 start. <clears throat> Pryor right now over Wagner, 42 to 41. Pryor, 5A football team. And it looks like another timeout here from Berry Hill. Not no. sure what's going yeah. on. Yeah. Clock. Okay. I'm guessing maybe the clock. Because Berry Hill only has one left. Two oh seven. So Berry Hill thinking. Miller adjusting the play. Josh back to pass, throws it over the middle, and this time it connects. He's been cold here in the second half, but connecting when he needs to. Yep, that's a big play, that's a big play. Tigers had good pressure, really did. Uh, it was just a good, good pass, a good route. James lines up in the slot. Miller on the hitch route. Finds his guy just near first down. We'll see where they mark just short, looks like. About a yard short of the first. You know, I think regardless of the outcome of this game, other than the mistakes, I think the effort has been there. There's no question. You know, the Tigers have played with a lot of effort. Haven't always played smart. That's Over the middle. Whoa. Nearly intercepted. Threw into Very double coverage. Very nearly intercepted. Never throw late over the middle. It's going to bring up third and one. Talking about trying to catch them off surprise there on second and short. Yeah, yeah, it's a great time to do it. You just, uh, you know, you just don't throw, you don't throw over the middle late. You just don't do it. So we're going to walk up and quick snap this thing, or that was the plan. Uh, they weren't set. Hands it off, and they get the first down. Some tired bodies out there right now. So a new set of downs here. The chains move. Chains line up in the slot. Hendricks out to your left. We're looking to the sideline. Takes a hand off to Burke oh. in the backfield, and it's Braden Morgan for a tackle. Huge tackle for loss. Another big play by Morgan tonight. 
been a beast out there. Last time out for Berry Hill. I can't see the clock. Is it 50.1? Is that what it 50 is? 50.1. Okay. It's under a minute here in regulation. Again, this game is brought to you by Green Country Lanes, Muskogee Skate Center, Scott Abbott with Muskogee County Farm, Riru, La Isla Mexican Restaurant, Tiger's Den, Info Media, Fort Gibson Education Foundation, Renfro Electric, Keith Harbor and Supply, and Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory. And Jackson, Purdue trying to get this defense alive on their feet and Arthur stands. Uh, the righty crowd jumping up and down. Second and 15. I'm uh, just curious to see what the Chiefs do here. You would think they would be pretty cautious. We're going to drop back to pass. Goes it to Hendricks. It's complete. Try to keep him in bounds. It's Woodworth again on the tackle. And the chains will move. And early they showed confidence in Raglan. The field kicker. Missed it. Wasn't close. Yeah, they're getting dangerously close thing is they don't have a timeout so man you want to try to keep those guys in bounds if possible trips out to the right Miller steps up goes off the back shoulder oh my goodness did he catch that ball Barry Hill jumped up and down like he did no, I didn't, I didn't see a completion it. call Ford did a pretty solid job getting his hands on it <laughs> By the way, if you just watch the burial sideline, you th you'd say he caught it, but I never saw it. Yeah, yeah it's incomplete. I, yeah. I thought there was a pretty good chance that. He got his hand on it again. We were going to catch it. Yeah. <laughs> 20 seconds down to the play clock. 35.3 seconds left here in regulation. It's Miller. Hands it off, and it's again. There's a pitch shot to Hendricks. Hendricks cuts it up the middle. And this clock has got to roll, 26 seconds. Thought they were going to look to throw that with Hendricks there for a second. Second time they've ran that play. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna spike this one. The clock now rolling. Chains are set. 20. No, well, they're not. Fake it. Shots back to pass. He has a receiver. And it's batted down. Incomplete. Thought we might have a chance to pick that, but just didn't happen. And yeah, it looks can. like Zane Potter. Zane Potter. So 12.6 seconds left. Woodworth limping off on the field as well. I think he's okay. Just a little small limp. So I think Woodworth's going to be all right. Yeah. But Ford, back to back, batted down passes. We'll take a break because the injury timeout. You've been watching Fort Gibson Tigers TV. Keith Hardware and Supply has been located in Fort Gibson, Oklahoma since 1957. We strive to find solutions to your fix and offer a multitude of quality products and services such as still chainsaws, Yeti coolers, Cub Cadet mowers, case knives, and big green egg grills. In early 2015, Keith Hardware remodeled and added hundreds of new items to better serve their customers. At Keith's Hardware, we're proud supporters of all Fort Gibson School events. Go Tigers! Well, uh, welcome back to Fort Gibson Tigers TV. So not Zane Potter down. Maybe Brody Rainbow. Could 70. Be. I had no, I thought Zane, uh, Zane Potter was 78. 
Keith Hardware and Supply has been located in Fort Gibson, Oklahoma since 1957. So it's 12.6 seconds left on the clock. Second down. We tend to go. Oh, it's D uh, Braden Morgan. Braden Morgan, okay. I, so I was way off. Don't trust me. And that's one you don't want to see. No, no. You don't want to see anyone. But Braden Morgan, vital pass rusher on this team. Yeah, he's been a wrecking crew tonight. Goes up to Hendricks. Just too far out of his reach. 7.8 seconds left here. Well, what do they do? Just inside the red out, zone. Bring out the field goal unit. Yeah. It's going to be a 30, what, six? Yes. A 36 yarder. Maybe even 37. So they're going to go for the win. It looks like they might ice the kicker here. And they do for us to take a timeout here. And you know, what a great way to start out your first no home doubt. game. <laughs> no Coming doubt. Coming down to the wire here. Yes. And we've, we've really been spoiled in the last you know, since I was 15 years old. So the last seven years of really good games here. Yes. Uh, at home, not a lot of uh, blowouts on either side. I mean, I can just remember count down, you know, the games of going right down to the wire, all the Hilldale games, uh, you know, the Wagner game. I still think one of the, the Wagner game. Uh, oh, wow. Right Wagner down to regulation, game. down by 14 at one point. Yeah. Went down to Wyatt Broken Bow Catusa several times. That kick is up. And it's short. 2.6 seconds left. We might be taking this to overtime. Yeah, I think so. I think the Tigers, you'll see. Knee it down, yeah. Yeah, victory formation. and. Play for the victory. What I love, though, in the last four minutes, we have not seen many penalty markers on the no, field. No, that's right. I don't know if we have. <laughs> that's right. It's, you know, I think the officials may be fatigued. They may that's be true. tired. No, I can't throw another flag. <laughs> Well, so we're going to overtime. They're all tied up. We'll be back with more. You've been watching Four Gibson Tigers TV. This broadcast is brought to you by Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory, Keith's Hardware and Supply, Renfro Electric, Four Gibson Education Foundation, Info Media, The Tigers Den. La Isla Mexican Restaurant, Scott Abbott with Muskogee County Farm Bureau, and Green Country Lanes and Muskogee Skate Center. Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory wish to personally invite you and your family to come tour the newest funeral home and the only crematory in Muskogee. Cornerstone welcomes the opportunity to answer any questions regarding planning and pre-arrangements for you and your loved ones. At Cornerstone, you'll find a helpful professional staff and beautiful surroundings. Come experience the difference at Cornerstone Funeral Home, 1830 North York, Muskogee, where you will find faces you know and reputations you trust. Hello, welcome back to Ford Gibson Tigers TV. I'm Hayden Hackworth. Alongside me is Bruce French. And if you're just now turning in, you missed the entire game. Well, we're glad you're here. We are in overtime. We've got a game down at the wire, 20 to 20. Yeah, you got a bunch of sore, tired bodies out there on both sides. I can assure you. Um, 
It's, again, you know, it's just one of those things going to come down to, to Will here tonight. So what was the longest, how many overtimes in your coaching days did you go into? Because oh, no wow. seven overtime like we did last year in the SEC. Not, I maybe two, two? at the most. Yeah, I, I don't think, I don't remember many. I'm, I'm really searching my... I think the, long, the longest I've seen here, I think, is two. And that was the Hilldale game two years ago. Yeah. Now, the longest one I witnessed was Kuita, and I believe it was either Lawton, Ike, or maybe Bishop McGinnis. Mm -hmm. I, I can't remember. It was one of those. And I think it was five overtimes. And it was about five degrees Wow. So it was, yeah, it was wow. miserable. That's, that's why I coach basketball, not football. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It can be five degrees, and so what? You're in a nice warm gym. Looks like Tigers are going to get to go first. Well. Look at those keys to the game. Time management not as big as a factor. No. Late game effort, though. Late game effort this is be huge. everything. And especially in the red zone, um, especially the middle areas. No matter where you're at, no matter what yard line, but now in the trenches, it's going to be big here. Yes, it is. I'd like to see one of those one-play drives. No doubt. <laughs> no doubt. I'd like yeah. to see a two-play drive. We put it in the end zone, then turn it over, and then get a pick. Yeah. Or yes. maybe a fumble. Yes. That's my, that's my call. You know, this game is weird because typically when you see a game with this many penalties, it's just ugly and it's boring. This has really been a pretty it exciting has, it game. It really has been. You know, even though it's a million and one penalties, that's unusual. Mahaney's rolling out. He's got a ton of pressure. Oh, yes, get rid of that thing. And he does. Throw it out of bounds. And, you know, as you say that, I remember that first, uh, the Jesse Rudd carry that had the spectacular. It was taken back. I'm thinking, man. We're not going to see another run like that. Two plays later, what yeah. is Tavian Woolworth do? Yeah. I mean, uh, nothing against Jesse Ruddy. Great run, but oh, Tavian yeah. Woolworth, I mean, he's halfway down, chest over his knees, and rips off a 40-yarder. And then, yes. again, did a huge 70-yard run. More of a product to the offensive line. Right. I don't even think he got touched on that run. No. Mahaney under center. Back in motion, rolls out to his left, throws it up to Carson Ladd. He catches it, call him out of bounds, no interception. It's going to be third down. You know, I wouldn't be surprised here. You, you run on those two downs. Do you, do you put it in the air? Or do you try to catch him off guard, put it back on the ground? Yeah, it's, uh, it depends on, I don't know. I'm sure they've been checking formations. They've been. I'm sure they've been checking what they come out in in formations. I don't think there's any question what's going to happen here with uh, nobody in the backfield. Swings it out to Connor Brown. Those are high. That ball's on the 11-yard line. It's going to be fourth down as they send Zan Hazen out on the field. <laughs> 28-yarder. And the Tigers are going to take a timeout here. We will take one with him. Be back with more. We've been watching Four Years and Tigers TV. Go see Scott Abbott, your local Farm Bureau agent. 
Proudly supporting and serving Green Country for 27 years. Call Scott Abbott at 918-682-2091 in Muskogee for your annual insurance review. Scott Abbott, your agent for life. Renfro Electric has been in business for over 35 years and is a full-service electrical contractor for all of Oklahoma. We are able to serve our customers with superior craftsmanship and top-notch service. With over 40 employees and a bonding capacity in excess of $6 million, we can handle those larger jobs but are still small enough to provide the personal service our customers have come to expect. For any electrical needs, give us a call. And we're back. Zan Hazen on the field. Going to put three up on the board to take the lead here in overtime. Just got it off. Boy, he did. Oh, the uprights. Nice. Now it's, it comes down to the Tiger defense. And he barely got it off. So the Tigers for the first lead of the game. Yeah. That's right. That is right. And we, we wait for that offense of Jake Miller leading the way along with Chase Burke and Jackson Knight. And really, they've done a really solid job of utilizing different guys in different roles. Oh, they have. Have about six different playmakers on that offense. They've been active in different ways. Sean and I. It's going to be Hendricks this time. Lapis tail back makes the guy miss. And I think it's the first time we've seen Hendricks line up as a running back tonight. Yeah, they're uh, they're a versatile bunch of kids. We're a ball in the seven yard line, second down. Hands that off. Oh, nice play. Uh, Morgan, Morgan again. making the stop. Eating up blockers, taking down the running back there. I believe it's Chase Burt. The loss of a yard under the play. Big third down here. Huge. Biggest third down, third down of the game. Miller draws back, throws it out to the sideline, attacking the perimeter. It's Hendricks, and he gets it in. And Bear Hill's going to walk away with the win here at the Leo Donahue. And a hard fought game coming down wire to wire. Both teams playing their hearts out. Yeah, that's right. I don't think uh, these kids have anything to hang their heads about. You know, again, a lot of mistakes, but yeah. effort. You, you cannot fault effort. And you're exactly right. And the, the, the hard thing about, the great thing about the hard thing about sports, you're going to come back and watch the film. Each player will. And they're going to see every little mental error. Yeah. And they'll yeah. think, man, we should have had this game. Yes. Now, and if it was, if that play doesn't convert, and let's say they, they don't make a, 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 the point on fourth down, then Barry Hills do the exact same thing. But yep. that's the beauty of sports. You can only have one winner. That's right. That's right. In life, the winners and losers mm -hmm. and, and – uh, Tonight, Tigers just come up a little short. But, and you don't get a chance to hang your head. You, you can go, you can you can hang your head tonight, Yeah. but you wake up tomorrow and you're getting ready for a great opponent next That's week right. a dynasty That's of right. Wagner. You don't have a chance to That's do that. Right. You've got to go and you've got to battle next week. That's fact, Hayden. That is a fact. Bear Hill knows they're fortunate to get out of here tonight. Hey, what a great game tonight. We'd like to thank you all for joining us and joining us more and more as each game this season. I'm Hayden Hacker. Alongside me is Bruce French and the rest of the crew. Thank you for tuning in to Four Gifts and Tigers TV.